What is up, party people? We are live from the Keen Landscaping Studios. We've got Phoenix, the intern, with a microphone. Present. Present. We've got Full Price Courtney. She's ready to rock, producing all the things, and we are going to be talking about all things residential real estate across the D, F, and W. We got it all, folks. You know what we don't have yet, though, is your questions. 214-310-0008. If you've got questions, call or text 214-310-0008. We're going to talk a lot today about all the things, all the predictions, all the crystal balls, all the interest rate predictions and the property value predictions for 2024 because, man, they are out there. There are lots of them. We've got lots of headlines. We'll break them down. We'll let you know what is true, what is not true, and more than anything, what you can do with that information. Should you make a move? Should you buy? Should you sell? Should you stay put and enjoy what you got? Is renting a good option? All those things. We'll break it down for you today. Uh, and if you have other questions, 214-310-0008. That's what you call, or you can also text 214-310-0008. 0008. The first segment is always brought to you by Patrick Glaros and his mortgage team over at Cardinal Financial. You can find them online at patrickglaros.com. G-L-A-R-O-S, patrickglaros.com. Anytime, day or night, you can get all the things and all the people we talk about and all the information and all the free tools and resources at touchmoneyteam.com. All right. We've got a pile of things to get through today. We got news. We got to clarify what's bogus and what's not. We got people wondering if 2024 is going to be a complete nightmare or a giant opportunity. I think we should just let Courtney tell them all the answers. What do you think, Phoenix? Yeah, it sounds good to me. Okay, Phoenix, the intern is on board. Thank goodness we have expert Courtney on the show. Listen, so you sent this article from Business Insider with the headline that mortgage rates are falling at the fastest pace since the 2008 housing market crash. And here, like the um, 30 year fixed mortgage rate slipped to 7.17% last week mm -hmm. from 737 in the prior week. I don't know, I just, you need to tell me what this headline means as far as how fast it is uh, dropping and also what these like minor percentage points mean. Yeah. So big picture, I'll, let's full disclosure to everybody listening and watching and all those things. That's a note. I literally send our real estate team a to say heads up. This is the conversation that people are having right now. B to say, here's some data. Now there are times I will send a headline and I'll say, this is bogus, but just be heads up. This is what buyers, sellers and renters are talking about right now. There are other times it's like, hey, make sure you're aware that this is this changed today. And that was shared with our team as a multiple, multi, multiple reasons. Number one, we've had this very pessimistic sense in the real estate market for a year and a half or more. There is there's the beginnings of some optimism the last several weeks where it's like, okay, interest rates are coming down. Now they're coming down faster than they've come down in a long time, but they went up faster than they've ever gone up. So the reality is we went from two something to eight something in less than two years. No one alive has ever seen that happen. It's just literally no one alive has ever seen that happen. Certainly during a time where they were potentially thinking about buying or borrowing for real estate. So now we're seeing them come down as fast or faster than we've ever seen them, but they're coming from a higher point than most of us have ever seen. So it's not like they're racing down to where we were. The good news there though, is they've come down pretty quick. They come down in little tiny increments to that other part of your question. Mm -hmm. So they've come from a lot of people were seeing 8.15 or, or 8.2 ish. Um, and they're down to 7.1 something. And this week, since that article was referring to week old data, we're seeing people with mortgages in the sixes again, high sixes, uh, with a few fees, we're seeing people in the low to mid sixes. Now, that's pretty. That's a big freaking jump to go from eight something to six something. It's a, a full percentage point or more. Now, why do people care? Because that's hundreds of dollars a month for a lot of people. Depending on how much you're borrowing, it's dozens to hundreds of dollars every month in that payment that just came down for the same exact house. 
we're, I'm getting a lot of questions from friends, family, neighbors, clients that are, that bought five months ago. They're like, can I refi already? Can I get out of a seven, seven, five into a seven, one, five? That's a big difference. Um, the answer is depending on who you borrowed from and how you did, sometimes you have to wait 90 days to refinance sometimes longer, but there are a bunch of different products out there now, loan products where you may not have to wait. You might have to wait longer. You just need to talk to the person that did your loan or go to patrickglaros.com or reach out to Patrick Glaros and his team at Cardinal Financial. But the reason that that headline matters is a, there's optimism in the marketplace. People are like, whoa, rates are coming down and they're staying down and they're going down again. B, that's an important data point for people to go, hey, is it true that they're coming down fast? Because that's gonna lead people to go, well, should I wait another week or two? Is, are they, is it gonna come down that much more? Uh, and then to your point, do those small increments really matter? Yes, especially on higher dollar amounts. And our home values around here are higher dollar amounts now. So every tenth of a percentage point matters. You know, that could be, depending on how much you borrow, you know, 20 or 30 bucks a month, every single one of those little incremental movements. Um, it's also a sign that the Federal Reserve, who sets the banking rates, which don't always, but almost always drive mortgage rates, is changing their approach. For a year and a half or more, they've said, we're gonna get rates up and we're gonna keep them up for a while. They got them up faster than we've ever seen them get them up, but they don't seem to be keeping them up. They announced just a couple days ago that they will probably reduce rates at least three times in 2024. Well, that means they'll go lower than they are consistently and they should be heading down all year. That's that's the best news people have heard in a while if you wanna borrow money for a house. There's other reasons you might see that as bad news or whatever, but that tells us we should have a long sustained positive movement for the cost of borrowing money. It's also an indicator of a ton of other things, but that one statement drives a lot of those other points. And that's why I would share that. Make sense? Yes. Okay. But they're saying that this has not translated into higher buying demand yet. That Okay. So tell me the date of the article that said that. December 6th. Okay. And what is today? Well, the that was two, two weeks ago, basically, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So in those two weeks, we have seen demand go up. And this is why you need a local, on the ground, attentive expert. Am I right, Phoenix? Yes, you need someone who specializes in your area. Thank you, thank you for saying that. Also, you need to not read headlines that are two weeks old. Although sometimes a two-year-old headline might be relevant. Yeah. It's just that we have to filter this information through expert, full-time, dedicated local professionals. Yeah. And look, I we are that. We're not the only ones. I think our team at the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team or as good as it gets, the best in the business. But if it's not us, make sure you have a full-time dedicated local expert that watches these things, understands them, and can interpret them for you to make wise choices. When you hire a real estate agent, that's what you should be getting is expert leadership and guidance, not just someone to open the door and fill out the paperwork. Those things help, but those are not the most valuable things that agents do. Okay, wait, I'm like, loving this next headline because I'm dying to know your thoughts about it. Okay. Did I finish the answer to the last one though? I want to make sure we. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Okay, good. Yeah. I thought that was good. Um, so in, in light of that lending tree conducted a survey and more than two fifths of Americans, 44% expect a housing market crash. Yep. And within the next year, and I guess like, and over a third of Americans want a housing crash. Yep. And do they know what this would actually mean? They have no clue. And and it's fun. It's easy to be like borderline, just an absolute jerk to those people because they're the, they're the ambiguous they, right? They have no clue what they're asking for, right? Now, selfishly, we would all like the real estate market to crash for that one house that we would like to buy, right? With the rest of the economy, I want my job to go, to stay my job. I want my salary to go up. Right. I want gas to go down, housing costs to go down, groceries to go down, mm -hmm. but the economy to go up, my stock portfolio to go up, my property value, I want the one I own now, I want to go up. The one I want to buy, I'd like to go down, right? Like, if, yeah, selfishly, that's what that stuff means. And that's why it's useless data. 
But it's a great headline. Yeah. It makes for, like, people in the news, and I'm not, like, angry at them. I just think we need to know what's going on. The job of a writer is to get people to read. The job of the newspaper or the radio station or the YouTube channel or the TV station is to get views, not to advocate for the consumer. That's the job of a professional, a real estate pro, mortgage pro, title company, insurance agent, you know, whatever. So our job, not for everyone on the planet, but for our clients, and then we want to be a valuable resource to everyone we can, is to help you and protect you. If we don't represent you, we can't do that fully, but we can do it generally. And all that to say, um, nobody that I know of truly wants a housing crash because housing is one of, if not the primary driver of our economy. And people don't want a massive economic downturn. Now, if you are a wealthy late stage investor, you might because you're like, I, I don't, an economic downturn is not going to negatively impact me. I could cover my living expenses for the next five lifetimes and a downturn is an opportunity for me to go buy and invest in assets at lower prices and all that. That's kind of the Warren Buffett mentality is, you know, when there's blood in the streets kind of thing. But the normal person does not want a housing downturn or housing housing values to go down. But it would be convenient to them if they could buy a house after prices had dipped. I get that. But 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 it's not even worth us spending a lot of time talking about because all the peripheral things that would come with a massive downturn in home home values would be much more costly. Well, and I also think like the last time this happened, 2008, right? Like they were a completely different age, millennials. Yeah. And so they were having a completely different well, experience. And if you're in DFW, even that wasn't nearly as bad as it was in lots of other areas. So, you know, if you're asking for some South Florida, West Coast housing crash, pff, brother, you never saw one before. Yeah. If we experience that, some people never recover. Yeah, you know, like this, this, nobody wants that. Yeah, you're going to be disappointed by all the other ramifications. Right. It's not going to produce the results that you hope. Yeah, but the, but but we we we're not mocking that, but we're kind of pointing out the error in that way of thinking. But there are people that that's actually what they're doing. They're like, I'm waiting till prices come down to buy, and you're like, um. I hear you. And I'm not saying there isn't a certain unique scenario where some people could benefit from that. But most people in a world where home values have tanked, everything else that impacts your ability to buy a house might might be negative as well. You may not actually want that. So anyway, we could talk about that till the end. Of well, time. and I, I think the headline's important because it tells you like what people are thinking. And actually, uh, the percentages were high for baby boomers expecting well, that. Let me ask you this. Why do you think people think that a housing crash is imminent? Right. Because they've been told right. every minute that, you know, sky is falling, the sky is falling. You know, it's it's self-fulfilling in that regard because that's what gets eyeballs and right. gets views and gets listens and gets clicks. And so that's what people say and do. I mean, there are whole news media sources that are basically built off of fear mongering. Yeah. Like that's all they ever do is communicate about the worst case scenario. And is it a good business model for clicks and views? It appears to be. Yeah. Is it helpful to the consumer? I do not think so. Will they be right occasionally? Yeah. If you make the same prediction for 20 years, every so often you'll be right. But I don't think it's helpful. I certainly don't think it's constructive, um, but it is what it is. And it is for a lot of reasons why we do this show. Yeah. To say that one's actually true. That one's partially true. That one's totally bogus. That may be true in LA or Nebraska. This is what's true about that here, or this is what's different here. We This is DFW Real Estate Weekly with Todd Tremonti. I'm Todd Tremonti. This is DFW. We do this once a week. And then in between the shows, we do this every single day for our clients. If you would like to be one of our clients or get advocacy and representation and guidance from us, all you got to do is call or text 214-310-0008, or you can go online to toddtremonti.com or Google Todd Tremonti and check out over 700 five-star reviews. Also, if you haven't had somebody check out your roof in a while, that's not wise. It's just literally not wise. Protect your asset, protect your investment, protect your family, your home, your antique furniture, all the things that are underneath your roof. And you do that by simply just once every two years, 
Storm or no storm, making sure somebody checks on all the seals and all the shingles and all the boots and the vents and all those things that you're not checking on. And just make sure that happens every two years. I suggest you go to pmrroofing.com and you ask for Jordan Collins, pmrroofing.com. You can email him directly at jordan at pmrroofing.com, jordan at pmrroofing.com. They will look you in the eye, shake your hand, and and handle that situation fairly. If you need repairs, they'll do it at a fair price and do it right the first time. They'll be here if you need warranty work. They'll be here when there's hailstorms. They'll be here when there's tornadoes. Uh, they've been here for a long time. They're going to be here for a long time. They are great guys with a well-run company. Jordan at pmrroofing.com. All right, Phoenix the intern. Listen, we've talked previously about college students investing in real estate you're soon to be a college student um we get some hilarious comments on youtube and social media about it sounds easy for you daddy's money since we talked about that have you thought about potentially actually trying to pull that off yes i have it sounds like a pretty good plan all right and how would you ever be able to buy a house as a young college student well I could take out a loan. Yep. I could work a nice job or even, you know, my little lawn business if I scale that hey, up. We're enough. working on that not being so little. Yeah. Yeah. So the answer is figure out a way, mm-hmm. right? Now, for someone that doesn't have a bunch of money from their parents, um, you could A, work your way through that. B, the one point I wanted to make for you and others in your situation. And by the way, if you choose to help your children get going in life by helping them acquire an asset that will then pay for itself in cash flow, no judgment here. Um, you're teaching your child an investment and how to work at it and earn it and honor that investment and potentially pay it back or whatever. But without that, there are um, loans that allow for this. They're called DSCR loans, debt service cover, coverage, um, anyway, DSCR loans. Um, and there's different versions of them and that's where I, it's not worth explaining all that. Where if, if the lender says, okay, tenants will more than cover the cost, I then don't need your assets and your income and your cash to cover all that. You would need to come up with a down payment and you could do that through working and saving like most of us um, and start with something really small, but ultimately you got roommates or tenants paying the mortgage and you could go from one to two and two to four and all those things. So, you have thought about it. Yes. Have you thought more about where you want to go to college? Well. I'm not asking you to make any grand announcements here. I'm just saying. No announcement, but hopefully Texas A&M. Is where hopefully I'll be Texas A&M and a bunch of people just whooped. Whoop. Oh, yep. my gosh. She, she went to LSU. I don't even know what just happened. Anyway, um, sick and bears. The, um, no Tigers! If that were going to happen for you, I got a great guy in College Station I would connect you with who does this all day, every day. He wrote a chapter in a book that I published about student housing investments in College Station. It's a really good chapter, so I'll hook you up with that. All right. All right. We got some other news stuffs that we can talk about. We got other questions. We got YouTube comments. We got all sorts of stuff. But before we do that, DP Lambert at Goosehead.com. DP dot Lambert at Goosehead.com. Uh, go-to guy for home and auto insurance. That's who you want to be talking to. If you haven't shopped your home and auto insurance in a, uh, a year or less, now's a great time of year to do that. And I would encourage you to include DP in that conversation. Um, lots of different opportunities when it comes to insurance. Usually it comes down to cheapest price, but I also want you to pay very close attention to best coverage. Uh, DP has an incredible track record of helping me, my family, many, 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 many hundreds and hundreds of our clients, our team members, our friends, our neighbors, our vendor partners, um, maximize their coverage while still saving money or minimizing the cost. Um, Everybody knows an insurance person or two or three or 10. Uh, I'm telling you, DP is excellent at what he does, saves a lot of people money, increases coverage for a lot of people while still saving the money. And also, he will be there year in and year out, day in and day out when you have questions and needs. So dp.lambert at goosehead.com. That's dp.lambert at goosehead.com. Listen, we have been talking about mortgage rates, Mm -hmm. 
But one thing you've really been coaching me and lots of people on is how to pay off your mortgage faster. And I feel like now I want you to share with our radio listeners your hot tip on how to get the mortgage rate pay well your mortgage paid off how to save a ton of money how to on save your a ton of money with this hot tip but i just want you to know ever since you've taught me and i've gotten it there's not a person i don't come in contact with and i'm <laughs> like hey i just want to make sure you're doing this all right we're going to do that after the break we're going to break it down very simply step by step how you can save 30 40 or 50,000 dollars off of your more literally i'm not exaggerating there's no gimmick this is very simple there's to no do. gimmick it's very simple to do how to save tens of thousands of dollars how to pay tens of thousands of dollars less to your mortgage company by the time you finish your loan without feeling like without missing any money i promise you we'll do that a little bit later in the show um and we'll do it step by step very very specifically before we do that though, if you are thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate anytime in 2024 or beyond, the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team, our team dedicates almost every single afternoon in the month of January for what we call free strategy sessions. That literally means sitting down in our office in Fort Worth or in our office in Richardson, or we can set up a Zoom if we need to. In person is better, but we can set up a Zoom if we need to and answering any questions you have about buying, selling, or investing in real estate in 2024 or beyond. And really the goal, we, that's why we call it a strategy session. The goal is just to help you have a strategy, to help you get a game plan going. So if you're, if for example, if you were like, hey, my kids are gonna graduate next year and then we're gonna downsize, that would be a great use of this time. Hey, let's grab a cup of coffee. Our team will buy you a cup of coffee, Topo Chico, Coke, water, you know, whatever you're into and answer your questions as well as give you some insights into what's true, what's really happening in our market, what prices are doing, what the trends are, where we think things will be th six weeks, six months, six years from now, and help you go into 2024 really with, a, with the confidence that you know what's going on. Now you might sit down and say, we wanna buy or sell right now, or you might sit down and realize, hey, we're a year out or we're five years out, all that's fine. This doesn't cost you any dollars and you don't have to make any big commitments. If you were to determine we are ready to go right now, then we could get you set up and, and, and represent you and get going forward if it's a fit. But if you would like one of those free strategy sessions, no cost, no commitment, all you gotta do is text 214-310-0008. You can call us at that same number. 214-310-0008, just text the word strategy and then we will circle back with you and schedule an in-person sit down or a Zoom meeting, or if we have to, just a phone call. 214-310-0008. Just text the word strategy. 214-310-0008. What's up, party people? We are live in the Keen Landscaping Studios, and we got all kinds of things to talk about. We promised you before the break that I would tell you how to save tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, this sounds... It's one of those things that sounds so bogus that you sort of tune out, but I'm telling you, you don't have to do anything weird. You don't have to come up with any crazy extra money. I'm about to tell you the such a simple way to save, depending on how much you owe on your mortgage, most for most people, 30, 40, or 50 thousand dollars. You can pay 30, 40, or 50 thousand dollars less than you normally would to pay your mortgage back and still be still pay it off and be free and clear and happy and legal and all those things. Okay. So Courtney asked me not that long ago, Hey, would you explain that to me again? Cause I've heard you explaining it, but I'm not doing it. Go ahead and grab a mic, Courtney. So you basically said to me, it still feels like I have to come up with a bunch more money. Yeah. When you're saying turn my mortgage payment into two half payments a month. <laughs> now that I understand it, it's clear, but okay. it feels like you're saying pay the mortgage twice. Okay, let's pause for effect. If you have any mortgage questions, you go to patrickglaros.com. Patrickglaros.com, so G-L-A-R-O-S. First segment of every show, of every part of every show, for the entirety of the history of our show. 
has been brought to you by Patrick Glaros and his mar- mortgage team over at Cardinal Financial. Patrick Glaros, G L A R O S, PatrickGlaros.com. It's literally the only person I have ever used for a residential mortgage in over 20 years. That's that's who I trust. PatrickGlaros.com. Okay. Now, this strategy, you don't need a mortgage expert. This is so simple. Here's what I've got. Let's just say that you borrowed $300,000. Okay? So maybe you bought a $400,000 house and you put 100 down. Doesn't matter. Let's just say you bought your mortgage amount is 300. Okay? Really doesn't matter how we got there. But you owe $300,000 and you're used to making uh you know payments for 30 years. Maybe you did a 15 year, but let's just use 30 cuz it's more common as our example. All right? And let's just say it's someone very recently that's at the very beginning of an of a loan, so let's use recent interest rates. Let's just say 7%. Okay? Now, taking out taxes and insurance, we're just talking about principal and interest. Um someone's got a $2,000 a month payment on that. Okay. If they pay it once a month and they're just paying principal and interest, which means just the amount related to borrowing the money to buy the house, two grand a month, $1,995 and 91 cents. If they paid one half of the payment every two weeks, so two half payments every four weeks, the payment's nine ninety seven ninety five. dollars but they're going to save a massive amount of money. Quick math over here, Phoenix, the intern. If you pay once a month, you're going to pay back, borrow 300, pay back $418,000. If you pay two half payments a month, you're going to pay $311,000 back. By my math, you're going to save $107,000 $107,000 over 30 years. It's, it's going to take 30 years. Really, it's going to take less than 30 years. I'll explain that in a second. And the only thing you're doing differently, follow me here. This is where I can lose some people, is instead of making 12 full payments a year, we're going to make 13 full payments a year. And the way we're going to do it is instead of paying thir- uh, 12 whole payments a year, we're going to make 26 half payments. Okay. A half a payment every two weeks. There's 52 weeks in a year. There's 26 two week periods. And if I do half a payment 26 times, that's 13 whole payments. But because I'm making a pay, most people get paid every two weeks. So when I get paid, I make a half payment and I make half a payment every two weeks. Feels like twice a month, but it's a little bit more than twice a month because there's 26 half payment periods. There's 26 two week periods. So I'm actually just making an extra payment a year, but instead of just writing a check for a whole extra payment, I'm just paying a tiny bit early because I'm doing every two weeks instead of once a month. I don't know. I wish I knew a simpler way to say it, but every month, instead of making one whole payment, I'm just making two half payments. Feels like the exact same amount but I'm actually going to make 13 whole payments. I'm never going to feel the difference in my budget because the difference is like a day here and a day and a half there. And at the end of the year, without feeling any difference in my monthly budget, I've made an extra whole payment. And if I do that every year, I'm going to pay my mortgage off, depending on the amount borrowed, maybe three, four, five, six, seven years early. And I'm going to save 40, 50, 60, or $100,000 in interest that otherwise, if I had just waited and paid it normally, I would have paid it. But if I just pay every couple of weeks instead of once a month, I'm going to shave that off the back end of the mortgage and I'll be paid off years early and will not have to pay that interest. Brilliant. It's so simple. It's not at all brilliant, but it feels brilliant once you, once it clicks for you and you're like, yeah, I'll do that. I will not miss the money in my monthly budget. Now, for a lot of people that are like, oh, good idea, pay extra on your mortgage. I get it. It's not brilliant. It's not unique. But most people don't have the discipline yeah. or the extra money to go, yeah, I'll just pay an extra 100 a month or I'll throw an extra payment at it here and there and I'll do the same thing. The beauty of this is it just becomes your new habit 
and you don't feel like you're spending any more money. Mm -hmm. You get paid every two weeks. Every two weeks, you make a half payment. Two halves feel exactly the same as a whole. You're just gaining a day or two every month. And ultimately, over 365 days, you've made one more whole payment. You don't miss it. Your monthly budget feels the exact same. You can spend the same amount of money. The difference is just spread out and you barely notice it. And all of a sudden, instead of a 30-year repayment period, maybe it's 23. Instead of paying $418,526.69, you pay $311,876.19. You literally save $107,000. Hundred seven three hundred to be clear, and you don't feel any difference. You basically, I mean, I'm trying to think of a nice way to say it, but what I want to say is like you finally get one over on the bank instead of them getting one over on you. So we don't need to say a ton more about that. But at the end of the day, this is the simplest way I know for you to save tons of money. And if you feel frustrated or out of control because mortgage rates aren't what you want, even though they're coming down. Um, This is a way for you to take much more control of the cost of a loan. Obviously, you could pay a loan off early. That helps. But this is a way to do it very simply, consistently, methodically without feeling the increase uh, in repayment. So there you have it. It's that simple. Not so much brilliant, but a brilliant impact on your financial world, significantly lowering your cost of borrowing to own a home. Thank you, Todd. Honestly, there's not a person lately that I have not come in contact with <laughs> that I'm like, are, are you doing this? I just want to make sure you're doing this. So what? how are people responding? Um, well, they've been like, oh, yeah, I just add that 13th payment to my full payment. Yeah. So I read a book years and years and years ago by David Bach. It's called Automatic Millionaire. And it the book the millionaire part is not like get, get be a bazillionaire. It's like create wealth the easiest possible way. Mm-hmm. And it basically it's just to automate it. Right. And the reason that the book exists is because people do not do what that person just said. Yep. Like if your goal is to throw an extra hundred bucks a month, at something You're- the average person will do that two times throughout the year, not 12 times two times because life gets in the way and there was car issue this month and the AC went out that month and college tuition, blah, blah, blah. And the cost of groceries is up. And all. Now I'm not saying all those things are not real. They are. But if you automate it, you're infinitely more likely to find a way to be consistent and keep going. So that's the beauty of this is just to automate half a payment every other month. Or if you want to save for your kid's college, automate that comes out of the check and I have to learn to spend, live off the rest instead of using my willpower and discipline and prioritization skills every month over and over on 57 different priorities. By the way, that book is still great. I don't think it's been updated since and it's still great. Um, But the principle is forever true. I want to take away the burden on my willpower to make these decisions. And then when I'm clear headed and I set a priority that I would like to save that hundred grand, I'm just going to automate it and make that happen. So I'm not talking smack about your friend. I'm just saying the vast majority of the people that are like, yeah, I just throw a little extra when I can. They just don't as often as they really otherwise could, especially if they could just spread it out so much that you barely even noticed. Think about this. What if I do that? And then I do have the willpower twice a year to throw an extra payment. Well, now I'm going to save 200 grand. Now I'm going to pay this thing off in half the time. And now you win... I don't know that the bank loses, but they win less. You pay them less for the same loan. And that's how you can take control over how much a loan costs you instead of just being like, well, that's the rate. I win or I lose. No, there's more of this game to be played. (coughs) And uh, I just think that's a better stewardship financial. No, it's a great, it's a great reminder. It's the difference between like, I have y'all take out money before I get my paycheck versus the line on my budget that I'm trying to save for my Roth every month. Or the, or the jar in the kitchen that you're like, Oh, we'll put some money in that from time to time. You're like, yeah, you spend it on pizza. You got to automate it, man. Yep. All right, folks, listen, if you haven't had your landscaping scouted out, now is actually a good time to do that because things have gone into or are going into into dormancy, but you've got an opportunity to get some new stuff in the ground and set roots before springtime, or you have an opportunity to actually get a landscaper like Keen Landscaping out 
before the massive rush that is the spring. So this is a great time for installations, design, consultation, uh, any construction projects with pathways or pergolas or anything like that, retaining walls, irrigation work, tree work, all of that. Keenlandscaping.com, K-E-A-N-E, keenlandscaping.com. Ask for our buddy, Alan. If you need regular maintenance, they do that as well. And you can ask for our buddy, Ben. Either way, call 972-424-4851 or go online to keenlandscaping.com. That's K-E-A-N-E, keenlandscaping.com. I'm so glad you brought up landscaping because Uh we are experts on homes on land. And uh, we got a question about like, is this a, is owning a home on land, can it be a short-term goal or is it a long-term goal? It's funny that you asked it that way. Um, I was at a, I was at the deer lease uh, earlier this week. Took, took my little girly down there to get her first year. Oh, did, did we get? Well, let's let's not talk about uh, okay. animal <laughs> slaughter. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we had a great trip. It was successful. Um, there will be meat in the freezer. So let's, um, the, I, the point I wanted to make is there was a guy there who was like, dude, I'm trying to buy like 15 or 20 acres and that has a great house on it or build a house on it. My budget is 700,000 to a million dollars. And I've fired two real estate agents because they have no clue what they're doing. I'm like, listen, dude, you you have no idea. I literally just handed my brother, before I had this conversation with this guy, a t-shirt from our team that says, Todd Tremonti Homes on Land Team. Like, this is what we do, man. This is one of the two primary areas we specialize in. Highly desirable neighborhoods in DFW and homes on acreage. And he's like, sweet, how can you help? I was like, well, where you live, I can't. I can introduce you to some people, but we do what we do well, and we don't do things that we don't do well. But if you were in Dallas, Fort Worth, man, I can walk you through every step of this thing. So if you'll repeat your question in context of that, I think I have a great answer for you. It, is it something I can achieve now? Yeah. Or so basically that's do I need what to plan for? These people were just kill, eating his time up. They were sending him like anything even remotely loosely related to his search. And that's where I was like, look, man, if the property is out there and it exists, we can get this done for you in like 30 days. He was like, what? These people are telling me they'll be looking for the next year or two and that there's nothing out there right now. So anyway, there are scenarios where you want maybe nothing's available right now. But the idea is that you have access to everything that is publicly available and you also have access to things that are not publicly available. And when it comes to five acres or 15 acres or two acres or 20 acres, but we're talking about in between a normal lot and farm and ranch property, the giant backyard deal, um, a lot of that is insider information. It's knowing who would sell but isn't on the market, who might sell next year, or if the right situation presented itself, there's a lot of that going on when it comes to homes on land. Um, So the answer is yes, that is something that, you know, if you can pay the purchase price um, can be done in a 30 to 45 day window, just like a normal neighborhood house. Um, Especially if you don't have something to currently sell or if you have something to sell and it's in a normal, desirable selling situation. Uh, We help people all the time, sell a home and get into a property on land or sell one on land and get into one on more land, bigger house, smaller house, whatever the case is. The short answer is yes, that can get done in a fairly normal timetable. What it requires a little bit more than a normal purchase is what we call slowing down before we speed up, which is like, let's have that initial consultation, that strategy session as quickly as we can so that we can make sure you know what you're asking for. You know, if you say an acre, does that mean an acre or does that just mean a big, big, big yard? Because different acres, not not all acres are equal. We We have a video on the YouTube channel about that right now. You know, if you're saying 15 acres, well, there's less of those out there. They're just less properties with 15 acres on them. So let's go make sure that the, that there are some of those available where you want the kids in school or, or within that commute time that you have before you get overly committed. So have that conversation up front. If you're thinking right now about buying or selling a home on land with, with a big giant backyard, just call our office. Let's start the conversation now. There's no pressure to do anything until you're ready or until the time is right for you. 
But especially in that area of specialization, people tend to wait too late and they lose out on some options. So give us a call, 214-310-0008. That's 214-310-0008. You can call or text. And uh, we'll talk about, are there any properties available? Or are there some off-market options? Or how can we help create that? Or when's the best time for you to sell that property um, of that type? Um, Or what do we think the value is? It's also a little bit tougher to value those properties. And people really wrestle with, uh, a lot of people have a, a bad opinion of their own value. It's just kind of an off, incorrect approach to valuing those properties. And that's what's keeping them from moving more quickly. And we can alleviate that very, very quickly. Like what makes us the team to do this? Like, why are we so good at this? Well, the answer is we've been doing it for a long time. We love it. I live on acreage. We have multiple other team members that like have lived or do live, want to live, are around it, live in these areas, have studied it, have spent a lot of time working with these sellers and buyers, talking to lenders about unique options, understanding septic and perimeter fencing and access and roads and solar and wells and, you know, the different aspects of pools and ponds and greenhouses and gardens and uh, driveways and all the things that are unique about this property type. So the short answer is experience, but beyond that, it's desire and interest and attentiveness. You know, I was reading them. I get a magazine called garden and gun, which is kind of a hilarious combination. Um, but I was literally reading in there about people, just the, the lifestyle of living on some land, right? Not the farmer rancher, like I do this as my full-time income job, but the lifestyle of, and there's a lot of different lifestyles, but I wanna walk out the back door and pick fresh vegetables. I wanna walk out the door and have room for my kids to run and ride four wheelers or drive. I wanna walk out the back door to my shop where I do art or I weld or I run a business. That's just a different mentality than I want the same as everyone else. And I'm not minimizing that. There are people that are like, I want 50 families just like mine within walking distance that my kids can walk out and play with. There's literally one is not right or wrong or better or worse, but it is a lifestyle decision to say, I want this land. And and someone who understands what those lifestyles demand and actually can help educate people who are wanting that lifestyle of what, how to get it or not, or what might not be as expected. It's a big deal. And our team has done that for a very long time right here in DFW, specifically for people that want to own a home with a big giant backyard. And it's hard for us to define that because sometimes a half acre feels bigger than an acre. And sometimes 20 acres is too much or 30 is not enough. But normally it's like an acre to 15 acres. We can certainly do more and we can do less, but that's normally the range of what big giant backyard means. And in DFW, what we have a ton of is one, two, and three, one, two or three acre backyards. There's less of them when we get into bigger acreage and they're harder to differentiate when we get into smaller than that. But we help people buy lots of houses in highly desirable neighborhoods and, and sell and buy and sell lots of homes on big giant backyard lots. But how do I know when I'm ready? Like, I've got this dream of like, I mean, we've got these strategy sessions coming up. Yep. And we do them year round. We just dedicate tons of time in January because most people are starting to think about their plans and their goals. But the answer is, um, you'll know you're ready when you talk to us, right? I mean, it's, it's not, I'm not trying to be like, well, you have to have us to know you're ready. I'm just saying, Within 30 to 90 minutes, we can help you figure out if you're ready. And it's going to come down to, like any other purchase, are you financially ready? Is your lifestyle in a place where you could make that transition right now? But the question that you're asking really is, how do I know that I'm ready to make the leap from a so-called normal house and lot to a bigger lot? Not necessarily even a bigger house, but a bigger lot, more land. And if you're excited about it and you're financially able and your lifestyle is at a place where you're ready to pack your stuff up and move, you're ready. Mm -hmm. There's nothing about it that's gonna like blow your mind and burden you where you have to go out and get all this crazy education to do it. Every time we move, there's an adjustment to the new property and how the hot water heater works and all the things. it, It is not gonna overwhelm you. Now, the more land you buy and the more things you wanna do on it, the more learning there is, of course, but 
you are ready. If you're financially ready and you and your, we, we say when you, your family and your finances are ready, you're ready. And we can help you determine if, if acreage, if a big backyard is right for you, or if a cul-de-sac lot is right for you, or if building is right for you, or if buying a so-called normal house in a normal neighborhood near some great trails or parks or something like that is right for you. That is what those strategy sessions are for. If you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate in 2024 or ever, we are offering 30 to 90 minutes of our time, of our dedicated full-time experts time at no cost to you, no commitment required. All you need to do is call or text right now, 214-310-0008. Text the word strategy to 214-310-0008, or you can call us at that same number, or you can go to the website, that's your mighty team.com. Fill out any form, call or text any phone number. Just say, hey, I'd like a strategy session. That doesn't mean you're ready to buy or sell or you're going to spend a ton of money. But Phoenix, the intern, he's going to close us out with a bit of wisdom. If nothing changes, nothing changes. Listen, listen. He's not wrong. He is not wrong. All right, folks, if you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate in 2024, we would love to give you a free strategy session. 214-310-0008.